Dear learners, I am S. S. Sehrawat, retired deputy commissioner, Kendriya Vidyalaya, Sangathan. Today, we will discuss accounting concepts and conventions. There are some concepts and conventions which are used in accounting for a long period of time. These concepts constitute the very basis of accounting. All the concepts have been developed over the years from experience and thus are universally accepted rules and are termed as generally accepted accounting principles or GAAP. In accounting, there are some many conventions which are used while recording the transactions in the books of accounts. Accounting concepts, accounting concepts refer to the basic assumptions, rules and principles which work as the basis of recording of business transactions and preparing accounts. Main accounting concepts are business entity concept, money measurement concept, going concern concept, dual aspect concept, business entity concept. This concept assumes that for accounting purposes, the business enterprise and its owners are two separate entities. Thus, the business and personal transactions of its owner are separate. For example, when the owner invests money in the business, it is recorded as a liability of the business to the owner. Similarly, when the owner takes away cash or goods from the business for his or her personal use, it is not treated as business expense. Thus, the accounting records are made in the books of accounts from the point of view of the business unit and not from the point of view of the owner. Let us take an example. Ms. Sakshi started business by investing rupees 2 lakhs. She purchased goods for rupees 20,000, furniture for rupees 10,000, plant and machinery for rupees 50,000, and rupees 10,000 remained in hand. These are the assets of the business and not of the owner. According to the business entity concept, rupees 2 lakh will be treated by business as capital that is a liability of the business towards the owner of the business. Now, suppose she takes away from business rupees 5000 in cash and goods worth rupees 5000 for her domestic purposes. This withdrawal of cash and goods by the owner from the business are her private expenses and not the expenses of the business. These are termed as drawings, thus the business entity concept states that business and the owners are two separate distinct entities. Accordingly, any expense incurred by owner for himself or herself or for his or her family from business will not be considered as an expense of business, but it will be treated as drawings. Since business and its owners according to this concept are treated as separate entities, therefore the transactions between these two are recorded in the books of accounts. Significance of this concept, the following points highlight the significance of business entity concept. Number one, this concept helps in ascertaining the profit of the business as only the business expenses and revenues are recorded and all the private and personal expenses are ignored. Number two, this concept restrains accountants from recording of owners private personal transactions. Number three, it also facilitates the recording and reporting of business transactions from the business point of view. Number four, it is the very basis of accounting concepts, conventions and principles. Concept number two, money measurement concept. This concept assumes that all the transactions 
must be in terms of money that is in the currency of the concerned country. In our country, such transactions are in terms of rupees. Thus, the money measurement concept transactions which can be expressed in terms of money are recorded in the books of accounts. For example, sale of goods worth rupees 1 lakh, purchase of raw materials rupees 50,000, rent paid rupees 20,000 etcetera are expressed in terms of money and so they are recorded in the books of accounts. But the transactions which cannot be expressed in money terms are not recorded in the books of accounts. For example, sincerity, loyalty and honesty of employees are not recorded in the books of accounts because these cannot be measured in terms of money although they do affect the profits and losses of the business concern. Another aspect of this concept is that the records of the transactions are to be kept not in the physical units, but in the monetary unit. For example, at the end of the year 2016, an organization may have a factory on a piece of land uh, measuring 5 acres, office building containing 10 rooms, 20 personal computers, 30 office chairs and tables. 50 kilograms of raw materials etcetera. These are expressed in different units, but for accounting purposes these are to be recorded in terms of money that is rupees. In this case the cost of factory land may be say rupees 6 crore, office building rupees 5 crore, computers rupees 5 lakhs, office chairs and tables rupees 1 lakh raw material rupees 15 lakhs. Thus, the total assets of the organization are valued at rupees 11 crore and rupees 21 lakhs. Therefore, the transactions which can be expressed in terms of money are recorded in the books of accounts, are recorded in the books of accounts and not in terms of quantity. Significance of this concept. The following points highlight the significance of money measurement concept. Number 1, this concept guides accountants what to record and what not to record. Number 2, it helps in recording business transactions uniformly. Number 3, if all the business transactions are expressed in monetary terms, it will be easy to understand the accounts prepared by the business enterprise. Number 5, it facilitates comparison of business performance of two different periods of the same firm or of the two different firms for the same period. Third concept is going concern concept. This concept states that a business firm will continue to carry on its activities for an indefinite period of time. Simply stated, it means that every business entity has continuity of life. Thus, it will not be dissolved in the near future. This is an important assumption of accounting as it provides a basis for showing the value of assets in the balance sheet. For example, a company purchased plant and machinery 4 rupees 1 lakh and its lifespan is 10 years. According to this concept, every year some amount will be shown as expense and the balance amount as an asset. If an amount is spent on an item which will be used in business for many years, it is not revenues of the year in which the item is acquired. Only a part of the value is shown as expense in the year of its purchase and the remaining balance is shown as an asset. Significance. The following points highlight the significance of going concern concept. Number 1, this concept facilitates preparation of financial statements. Number 2, on the basis of this concept depreciation is charged on the fixed assets. Number 3, it is of great help to the investors because it assures them 
that they will continue to get income on their investments. Number 4, in the absence of this concept, the cost of a fixed asset will be treated as an expense in the year of its purchase. Number 5, because of this concept, business can be judged for its capacity to earn profits in future. Next concept is dual aspect concept. A dual aspect concept is the foundation or basic principle of accounting. It provides the very basis of recording business transactions in the books of accounts. This concept assumes that every business has a dual effect. That is, it affects two accounts in their respective opposite sides. Therefore, the transaction should be recorded at two places. It means both the aspects of the transaction must be recorded in the books of accounts. For example, goods purchased for cash has two aspects which are giving of cash and receiving of goods. These two aspects are to be recorded. Thus, the duality concept is commonly expressed in terms of fundamental accounting equation which states that assets of a business are equal to its liabilities and capital. Accounting equation states that the assets of a business are always equal to the claims of owner or owners and the outsiders. Owner's claim is also termed as capital or owner's equity and that of outsiders as liability or creditor's equity. The knowledge of dual aspect helps in identifying the two aspects of a transaction which help in applying the rules of recording the transactions in books of accounts. The implication of dual aspect concept is that every transaction has an equal impact on assets and liabilities in such a way that total assets are always equal to total liabilities. Let us analyze some more business transactions in term of their dual aspect. Number 1, capital brought in by the owner of the business. First aspect, receipt of cash. Second aspect, increase in capital or owner's equity. Number 2, purchase of machinery by check. First aspect, owning of machinery. Second aspect, reduction in bank balance. Number 3, goods sold for cash. First aspect, receipt of cash, second aspect, delivery of goods to the consumer. Number four, rent paid in cash to the landlord. First aspect, rent expenses incurred. Second aspect, payment of cash. Once the two aspects of a business transaction are known, it becomes easy to apply the rules of accounting and maintain the records in the books of accounts properly. The interpretation of dual aspect concept is that every transaction has an equal effect on assets and liabilities in such a way that total assets are always equal to total liabilities of the business. Significance of this concept. The following points highlight the significance of dual aspect concept. Number one, this concept helps the accountant in detecting errors. Number 2, it encourages the accountant to post each entry in opposite sides of two affected accounts. Number 3, it helps in preparing the financial position statement that is balance sheet on a particular date. Accounting conventions. Accounting conventions refer to common practices which are universally followed in recording and presenting accounting information of the business entity. These are followed like customs, traditions, etc. in a society. Accounting conventions are evolved through the regular and consistent practice over the years to facilitate uniform recording in the books of accounts. Accounting conventions help in comparing accounting data of different business units or of the same unit for different periods. These have been developed over the years. The most important conventions which have been used for a long period 
are convention of consistency, convention of materiality, convention of conservatism. Convention of consistency. The convention of consistency means that same accounting principles should be used for preparing financial statements year after year. A meaningful conclusion can be drawn from financial statements of the same enterprise when there is a comparison between them over a period of time. But this can be possible only when accounting policies and practices followed by the enterprise are uniform and consistent over a period of time. If different accounting procedures and practices are used for preparing financial statements of different years, then the result will not be comparable. Generally, a businessman follows the same general practices or methods year after year for preparing the books of accounts. While charging depreciation on fixed assets or valuing unsold stock, once a particular method is used, it should be followed year after year, so that the financial statements can be analyzed and compared provided that the depreciation on fixed assets is charged or unsold stock is valued by using same method year after year. This can be further clarified in case of charging depreciation on fixed assets. Accountant can decide to adopt any one method of depreciation such as diminishing value method or straight line method. Similarly, in case of valuation of closing stock, it can be valued at actual cost price or market price, whichever is less. However, precious metals like gold, diamond, minerals are generally valued at market price only. Therefore, as per this convention, the same accounting methods should be adopted year after year in preparing financial statements. But it does not mean that a particular method of accounting once adopted can never be changed. Whenever a change in method is necessary, it should be disclosed by way of footnotes in the financial statements of that year. Significance. The following points highlight the significance of convention of consistency. Number one, it facilitates comparative analysis of financial statements. Number two, it ensures uniformity charging depreciation on fixed assets and valuation of closing stock. Convention of materiality. The convention of materiality states that only material fact that is important and relevant information should be supplied to the users of accounting information. The question that arises here is what is this material fact? The materiality of a fact depends on the nature and the amount involved. Material fact refers to the information that will influence the decision of its user. For example, a businessman in dealing in electronic goods, he purchases TV, refrigerator, washing machine, computer, etc. for his business. In buying these items, he uses larger part of his capital. These items are significant items, thus should be recorded in the books of accounts in detail. At the same time, to maintain day to day office work, he purchases pen, pencil, match box, scanted stick, etc. For this, he will use very small amount of his capital. But to maintain the details of every pen, pencil, match box, or other small items is not considered of much significance. These items are insignificant items and hence they should be recorded separately. Thus, the items that are significantly important in recording the details are termed as material facts or significant items. The items that are of less significance are material facts or insignificant items. Thus, according to this convention, important and significant items 
should be recorded in their respective heads and all material or insignificant all immaterial or insignificant transactions should be clubbed under a different accounting head. Significance, the following points highlight the significance of convention of materiality. Number 1, it helps in minimizing errors in calculation. Number 2, it helps in making financial statements more meaningful. Number 3, it saves time and resources. Convention of conservatism. This convention is based on the principle that anticipate no profit, but provide for all possible losses. It provides guidance for recording transactions in the books of accounts. It is based on the policy of playing safe in regard to showing profit. The main objective of this convention is to show minimum profit, profit should not be overstated. If more profit is shown than the actual, it may lead to distribution of dividend out of capital. This is not a fair policy and it will lead to the reduction in capital of the enterprise. Thus, this convention clearly states that profit should not be recorded until it is earned. But if the business anticipates any loss in near future, provision should be made in the books of accounts for the same. For example, valuing closing stock at cost or market price, whichever is lower, creating provision for doubtful debts, discount on debtors, writing of intangible assets like goodwill, patent, etc. The convention of conservatism is a very useful tool in situation of uncertainty and doubts. Significance. The following points highlight the significance of convention of conservatism. It helps in ascertaining actual profit. Number two, it is useful in the situation of uncertainties and doubts. Number three, it helps in maintaining the capital at its real value. Dear learners, today we discussed the basic accounting concepts and conventions. These accounting concepts and conventions form the basis of recording transactions in the books of accounts and these conventions and concepts have been developed on the basis of practice and experience by the accounting fraternity. Thank you. घर बैठे पाएं राष्ट्रीय मुक्त विद्यालय शिक्षा संस्थान यानी NIOS में एडमिशन वो भी एकदम आसान तरीके से जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को होगी समय और धन दोनों की बचत NIOS से शिक्षा कभी भी कहीं भी शिक्षार्थियों क्या आप जानते हैं NIOS में एडमिशन लेने का सरल और सुगम तरीका जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को ऑनलाइन प्रवेश देने में सहूलियत मिलती है एन में प्रवेश की प्रक्रिया पूर्णतया ऑनलाइन है शिक्षार्थी घर बैठे इंटरनेट द्वारा प्रवेश के लिए सबसे पहले एन की वेबसाइट www.nios.ac.in पर लॉगिन करें अपना ईमेल आईडी और पासवर्ड डालकर अपना पंजीकरण करें 
पंजीकरण के बाद लॉग इन करने पर ऑनलाइन प्रवेश हेतु आवेदन पत्र खुलेगा आवेदन पत्र को निर्देशानुसार भरें और प्रिंट आउट ले इस प्रिंट आउट पर अपनी फोटो संलग्न करें ऑनलाइन प्रवेश के लिए शुल्क हेतु भुगतान के तरीके हैं क्रेडिट कार्ड के द्वारा डेबिट कार्ड के द्वारा राष्ट्रीकृत बैंक के ड्राफ्ट के माध्यम से, जो कि सचिव एन नई दिल्ली या नोएडा के पक्ष में दे हो भरे हुए आवेदन पत्र के साथ साथ डिमांड ड्राफ्ट और संलग्न किए जाने वाले दस्तावेज हैं जन्म रजिस्ट्रार के जिला कार्यालय से जारी जन्म प्रमाण पत्र की सत्यापित प्रति जिसमें जन्म तिथि अंकित हो पिछले विद्यालय से प्राप्त विद्यालय छोड़ने का प्रमाण पत्र जिसमें आवेदक की जन्म तिथि लिखी हो प्रवेश फॉर्म का प्रिंट आउट एन के संबद्ध क्षेत्र केंद्रों पर 10 दिनों में पहुँच जाना चाहिए अन्यथा उचित दस्तावेज ना लगे होने पर आवेदन फॉर्म रद्द किया जा सकता है प्रवेश प्रक्रिया की पुष्टि होने के बाद शिक्षार्थियों को परिचय पत्र व अध्ययन सामग्री डाक द्वारा तुरंत पहुंचाई जाती है ऑनलाइन प्रवेश एक बहुत ही सुगम और सुविधाजनक प्रवेश प्रणाली है ऑनलाइन ऑन टाइम फॉर सेफ एंड सिक्योर एडमिशन प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने हम अपना दीपक स्वयं बने हम अपना रास्ता स्वयं चुने जीवन ये प्रकाशित करने राहों को करने कभी पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय के लोच से युक्त हो कभी पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय के लोच से युक्त हो मित्रों हम उठे और जागे प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने 